Good morning. I'm Kim Murphy, the Regional Director for Down South West of Queensland Transport and Main Roads and it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you to this site this morning. Before we commence, I'd like to acknowledge the Yagara Yurugul people, past, present and emerging, whose land on which we meet today. I'd like to officially acknowledge the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia and Minister for Infrastructure, Transport and Regional Development, the Honourable Michael McCormack, welcome. The Assistant Queensland Treasurer, um, for Glenn Butcher, who also is representing the Queensland Minister for Transport and Main Roads, um, Mark Bailey, who unfortunately is an apology today. I'd also like to acknowledge um, Dr John McVeigh, Member for Groom, and Mayor Antonio from Toowoomba Regional Council, and also the Toowoomba Regional Council Portfolio Lead, Councillor James O'Shea today, and an invited guest. So to today, to John McVeigh to start the proceedings. Well, thank you, Kim, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are finally here. This is a project that's been a long time coming, quite frankly. Uh, I've been working with the Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormack, obviously the office as well of Mark Bailey, the State Minister, and I thank both of them first and foremost for finally agreeing to fund these projects. These projects involve obviously these culvert upgrades here on East Creek and West Creek uh, on the other side of town on James Street. Uh, this is the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle in the flood mitigation strategy for the whole of the city of Toowoomba following those uh, dramatic events back in 2011. So I acknowledge the Deputy Prime Minister Michael McCormack here, obviously Minister Glenn Butcher uh, from the Queensland State Government as well. Good to have him in town, former state colleague of mine. Uh, and of course, uh, our Mayor Paul Antonio, <coughs> Councillor James O'Shea, and I wanted to mention uh, Councillor Joe Ramia as well. I mention them because Council here in Toowoomba has led uh, such a visionary project over so many years. The Mayor will talk about it much more uh, comprehensively than I can, but I reflect on the fact that I was on council with uh, the Mayor back in those days of, those, of that flood, and to see what council has done since that time, the flood mitigation right across the city, detention basins upstream here that caused great consternation throughout the community, uh, channel widening, other mitigations downtown, particularly the, uh, the bypass or the ring road there adjacent to the railway station, for example, it's all been about protecting our community. So Mr Mayor, I congratulate you and your leadership, all of council in providing that leadership over what has been some years now, but it's been a comprehensive strategy. And these two culvert upgrades here on James Street, as I said, are the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Just to uh, round out some of the background on this project, uh, almost $17 million between both culverts, East and West Creek, uh, here on Kitchener Street, uh, obviously in terms of East Creek, which was the scene of uh, some of the tragedies uh, that uh, those flooding events brought to our region. Uh, that uh, that uh, the tragedy of that mother and son being swept to their deaths here uh, at this intersection is something we will never forget, uh, and this upgrade will prevent those sorts of concerns in the future. Equally on West Street, adjacent, uh, on uh, West Creek, I should say, adjacent to the PCYC, we're seeing a similar upgrade. So uh, it's tremendous to be here with the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister Glenn Butcher from the State Government, to announce this funding, this joint uh, partnership. And uh, I just wanted to mention before I hand over to the Deputy Prime Minister, I thank him for his perseverance, his patience, because uh, he was here with me back in April of this year with the Mayor uh, on West Creek to emphasise the importance of this project. Uh, and it's been a bloody hard slog since then, to tell you the truth, uh, to identify funding savings from uh, uh, Warrigo Highway upgrades to our west and to get those funds allocated to this project and to see the state government come on board as well is a tremendous outcome. We'll see construction start early next year, completed by the end of next year. Uh, we will miss this wet season, but we'll certainly be ready for the next one. Uh, and I say to the Deputy Prime Minister, there are a few more road projects I've got to talk to you about. Uh, the yeah, Mayor will remind sure you as well, uh, and we've got other projects that I'll continue to chip away with, uh, but to, uh, to get delivery of these projects today is a great outcome indeed. So uh, I give you, ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. Mm. 
Well, thank you, John, and I'm assuming that uh, those other road projects that he mentioned were one of the reasons why he brought me here on one of the back streets, one of the bumpiest roads I've been on in uh, a few weeks, and I said, is this the best way to, to this particular project? And he said, it's one of the other road projects that I want delivered, one of the other projects that I want you to fund. And uh, John McVeigh is a fighter. Uh, the member for Groom uh, wears the carpet out coming into my office to make sure that he gets delivery for Toowoomba and region and make sure that it actually does get delivered. But this project is a project which shows when all three levels of government come together to work cooperatively and collaboratively. And uh, in that regard, I'm really pleased that the uh, Mayor of Toowoomba Regional Council, Paul Antonio, and Councillor James O'Shea are here today. They've done the specs, they've done the flood mitigation study, uh, they've done the engineering work and all the business case, etc., etc., uh, for these projects. And they have obviously a vision and a plan for the future for other projects. And so I commend them uh, for the vision and planning and work that they do. And not just for this culvert upgrade, not just for this replacement of the culverts, but indeed for the work that they do for Toowoomba. And I also uh, acknowledge uh, the presence here of uh, Glenn Butcher, uh, the Minister from the uh, Queensland Government, uh, Treasury Ministry, uh, he's in. And of course, that's one of the most important portfolios because they're the ones with the uh, purse strings on the money. Glenn, thank you for coming here today. I know you're representing Mark Bailey. I work with Mark Bailey on uh, several projects, not least of which is the inland rail at the moment. But we, I want to work uh, with states which uh, want to get things built, which want to get things done, and we're getting things done here today. This is a more than $13.5 million commitment by the Federal Government on an 80-20 split with the Queensland Government. It's a project of about $16.9 million, a project which is, you could say, long overdue, a project which uh, John McVeigh has fought hard to achieve, which today we are delivering the announcement of the money uh, and uh, next year, of course, building will start and finish and I look forward to returning here uh, when the project is, uh, is completed and potentially opening it because I think it's uh, something that the community has wanted, needed, expected and most of all deserved. Uh, when it rains here in uh, Toowoomba or elsewhere in regional Australia, it rains very, very heavily. We're going through a dry spell at the moment, but uh, we all know Australia is a country of uh, flooding rains and droughts. Uh, one follows the other and when we do have those rains we want to make sure that our infrastructure is there to cope with it. We want to make sure that we avoid the tragedies that we sadly saw in 2011. So uh, I commend John McVeigh uh, for the work that he's done to make this uh, uh, announcement possible. I commend him for continuing to fight for better infrastructure, for more funding for the electorate of Groom and particularly for the city of Toowoomba. I'd now like to hand over to uh, Mayor Antonio. He will make some comments and then we'll hear from Glenn Butcher. Sorry. We'll swap Glenn, that around. We'll swap that around then. <laughs> All good. Thanks, Michael. Uh, it is great to be here today and to see three levels of government uh, working together for this wonderful project going forward. Uh, all together, 80-20 split, as we've said, with the federal government here today. These are the type of projects that we need this co-funding delivered for our state, uh, and particularly up here in this regional part of Queensland, Toowoomba. This project is a special project for this community. It's been a long time coming, uh, particularly after the rain event in 2011, which seen a loss of life right here behind us in this culvert. This project will see two major projects done in one, one package. One here behind us in East Creek, which will see more culverts go under the road, which lets more water get away. This is a wonderful project, not only to deliver for this community for their flood mitigation strategy, but also creating jobs on the ground to get this vital work done for this local community. So it's great to be here today with the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, showing that we can actually get these wonderful projects done uh, collaboratively with uh, not only the federal and the state government but also the local council. I'd like to also acknowledge uh, the Transport and Main Roads Department for the work that they've done prior to getting us to this point. A lot of the design and strategy has already been done and it's ready to go at the start either uh, early next year and hopefully be done by the end of the year. So it's a great teamwork here in Toowoomba, great work by the council to make sure that their flood mitigation strategy was put together. And this is the last piece, as John McVeigh said, of this puzzle for this community to stop these type of events happening where we put people at risk on our roads here in Toowoomba. Great to be here with uh, the, the council, great to be here with uh, the Deputy Prime Minister today. Well, thank you very much. This is a very special day in, in uh, Toowoomba's history. Uh, can I recognise Kim and the work that her and her team have done? Can I recognise Rod Betts, one of our senior engineers who's here, who's been very much involved in this? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that event in 2011 shocked uh, not only the Toowoomba, but it shocked the nation. 
it probably shocked part of the world. Uh, to see a community 700 metres above sea level experiencing what we experienced here was almost unbelievable. The damage in our region was $250 million, well beyond the scope of the Toowoomba Regional Council to fund. And Mr Deputy Prime Minister and, and Mr, Act, uh, Mr Assistant Treasurer, I thank you very much for, for the, your government's giving what you gave. The advocacy of uh, our local member John McVeigh in respect to this particular project, I think it all began quite intensely in 2013. Uh, a $17 million project which is essential to protect the CBD of Toowoomba. That's what it's about. The work that we've done upstream is also involved in protecting the CBD of Toowoomba. But uh, don't uh, think you're right off the hook uh, to all the politicians here because there is a, the stream does continue further past the CBD and we'll be talking to you no doubt about that in the future. The comment was made about three levels of government working together. That's precisely what you see here today. Uh, I give John a pretty hard time in terms of uh, uh, what I want for this community. He conveys that obviously by the worn out carpet to the Deputy Prime Minister. I talk to the, the, the government in, in Brisbane. Uh, I have a wonderful relationship with them. And uh, I think that uh, Toowoomba is one of the powerhouses in the Australian economy. We need to make sure that we're still doing the things that need to be done here. So look, I thank you very much. Uh, but to just tell you this, when you want to see a good example, and I can't help but say this, Mr Deputy Prime Minister and Mr Assistant Treasurer, there are 10 local governments together with the state government, together with the federal government, walking, working together on a dream for South East Queensland. I'll say little more than we would love it to be a 45 minute region. And I think you understand that that's about fast rail, that's about connectivity for the future. That's the kind of dream that leaders like myself and these people who are with me need to have. Yep. So particularly thanks to my good friend, John McVeigh. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's very appropriate now that I introduce my friend and colleague from the Toowoomba Regional Council, James O'Shea. And for your information, James, in a previous life, was heavily involved in the media. He was here on that fateful day. He was here when it happened as a reporter with another young man called Robert Goulds, who now worked for us, uh, when those people were washed away. This is a scene of tragedy, and I think this young man was there to report that, and I'd like him to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Paul. And look, I think Paul summed it up really well. The we can't underestimate how critical this project is and, and as Paul alluded to, I worked uh, with like these people that day back then 2011 and we arrived at this scene and, and, and the scene to, is something I'll never never forget and, and someone said to us quite hysterically, someone, some people have just been swept away and, and we know sadly what the result of, of that was. We also saw people clinging to, uh, to poles that you'll see behind us here. We saw a person sitting on top of a car waiting to be rescued so that's the scene we saw in 2011 and that essentially has been what has been the start of what has become uh, a massive recovery for this city and to see where we are today and as, uh, as Dr John McVeigh said we are finally here and, uh, and I think it's it's wonderful that we are here and we can't underestimate just how critical this is to our region. In my time on council this has been of this council a priority and, and it's been continuously that message has continued to take whether it be to state whether it be to, to federal and even to this community so to be here today and to see the federal government to see the state government local government working together to achieve this project for something that is absolutely critical for this city and for this region is something really special and now we can get on with the job and it's been said many times this is the final piece of the puzzle but there are further pieces that need to be put into place but this one is absolutely critical and I think it's a, a great outcome today and to have so many people here and involved and, uh, and we look forward to working together yep. in, uh, as all levels of government to ensure that this is the right outcome. So well thank you. Well 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 Thanks James. Um, we will uh, go to questions now uh, for, uh, for you with uh, my colleagues here. But there's one last point I wanted to put on the public record to emphasise the significance of this announcement today. And again, on behalf of the Toowoomba community, alongside the Mayor and Councillor James O'Shea, all councillors, I want to uh, very, very uh, passionately thank uh, the Deputy Prime Minister 
and the State Minister Mark Bailey for agreeing to fund this project. Why? Because the window of opportunity to secure funding for this project is closing. This is the Warrigo Highway. As soon as the second range crossing is completed, this will no longer be the Warrigo Highway, James Street. The Warrigo Highway will be out on the second range crossing. And if this was no longer that highway, we would have great difficulty in securing funding for a project like this from the federal government and the state government. So again, I thank you, Michael, and through you, Glenn, I thank Mark Bailey uh, for agreeing to fund this project. Uh, the time was, uh, the, the window was closing and it's very important that we were able to secure it now. So thank you very much. Well done, Over yeah. here. I wasn't going to talk about that. Any questions? Well, I'm not against fast rail links and uh, I'm not afraid of building things and I certainly want to get on with the job of uh, making sure we do just that uh, with the cooperation of uh, state governments, with the cooperation of indeed local governments like we've seen with this project here. And as far as migration is concerned, we have a cap of 190,000. Uh, we've only actually seen in recent years about 160, 163,000 migrants arriving uh, in Australia. Uh, sure, there are calls uh, for cuts in migration. I understand that, but I also understand, uh, you know, that those calls have come on the back of congested capital cities, and that's why the federal Liberal Nationals government is investing so heavily in making sure that we ease that congestion, but also rolling out a record $75 billion worth of infrastructure, much of which uh, goes to regional areas for projects. Uh, which is going to enhance regional communities such as Toowoomba, such as Wagga Wagga in New South Wales from where I come from and, and those cities uh, want more migrants. Uh, we've got uh, uh, capital, uh, regional capitals throughout Australia, indeed smaller cities as well and towns uh, which want more migrants, strategic and targeted migration to those particular areas to fill the jobs that are otherwise not being filled. You have a, a place the size of Dubbo in regional New South Wales which has an unemployment level at the moment of 1.9%. Now that's way below the national average, the national average which is already at a 12-year at a low or 10-year low. But the fact is you've got places like Dubbo crying out for more migrants. It needs to be str strategic, it needs to be targeted and that's what the federal government is doing. Uh, but as you, as you ask about uh, high-speed rail, that's something that we can consider. Obviously we need uh, willing partners, uh, not just uh, at a, a state level, but also a private level and we can see what we can do in the future in that regard. Well, I've appointed uh, Warren Trust some months ago as uh, the chair of Inland Rail and Richard Wankmuller as the chief executive officer uh, looking after this project. This is nation building, $9.3 billion, a 1,700 kilometre corridor of commerce. I'm going to Gilgandra in New South Wales this afternoon where there are also some concerns. I look forward to returning here and uh, John McVeigh has invited me to sit down with uh, those people who have issues and concerns. I promised them some time ago I would be back and as soon as Parliament rises for the year I'll do my very best to get back here to talk to those concerned uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, to uh, chat with them about what we can do and, uh, and where we'll go with this particular project. Not aware of that at the moment. Obviously, there'll be a process that we have to go through to get to that point. Uh, it is a major project. Uh, these things aren't cheap. Uh, we know it costs a lot of money to get to this point. Uh, there hasn't been a decision made on that yet, and uh, no doubt we'll let you know when, when we get a decision. Yeah, well, just what's your message to the truck companies who are trying to plan for the future who are unable to do that because they don't know what the just They need to be patient. We're, we'll, we'll get to that point. Uh, this, as I said, is a major road. It's going to be a wonderful uh, a piece of uh, road work for these trucks compared to what we currently have now. Uh, this has been a, a major project which is going to save them time, save them costs in their trucks, you know, compared to where they go now. So it's going to be an amazing road. Uh, we will get them the information they need as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we're just not at that point just yet. Okay. Well, good. You want to do some cutaways of us walking? Sorry, I'm on. Now, towards the end of 2018. Um, is that timely enough? Are these changes? 
Oh, it is some years down the track, there's no doubt about that, and that's a point that uh, both the Mayor and I have been making uh, with the State Government and the Federal Government, of course. But again, I want to very firmly endorse the flood mitigation strategy that the Toowoomba Regional Council has put in place uh, with the support of the State and Federal Government. We have seen detention basins upstream, which caused great concern in the community. The Mayor and councillors led the charge. We've seen uh, uh, channel widening uh, throughout both East Creek and uh, West Creek. Of course, we've seen that very significant uh, inner city ring road project adjacent to the railway station, which is significant flood mitigation works in its own right, raising that bridge on Russell Street and throughout uh, that convergence of East and West Creek. So this has been a long project, there's no doubt about it. Uh, this is the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle, uh, and I'm thrilled that we're finally here. Well, the council uh, has been consistent throughout, and I, again, I'm speaking on behalf of the mayor and council, but I do endorse them very strongly for the leadership they've shown over those years. Uh, I was on council with uh, Paul Antonio. He was then deputy mayor. Joe Ramia was there. Uh, when we had uh, council officers uh, assess the flood impacts and go into a very significant study, looking at the channels, looking at the, uh, the freak flood event that we had and preventing uh, and plans to prevent that in the future. That's where we are now. You don't do these sorts of projects overnight and the council has shown tremendous leadership, I believe. Uh, I'm happy to make some comments. Um, uh, uh, the Mayor, the Deputy Prime Minister may want to add to it, but I heard, uh, uh, heard Councillor Graeme Shire, the Mayor of Gundawindi this morning, talking about uh, that rocket launch and the fact that that just adds to, I guess, our knowledge, not only of that technology, but what that technology can bring to us uh, in terms of, quite literally, the universe in the years to come. Now, one small step, you might say, but uh, Councillor Graham Shire, the Mayor of Gundawindi, is very proud of that. And to see this sort of technology being embraced, and in this case, applied in regional Australia, regional Queensland, in this case, Deputy Prime Minister, I think uh, is really impressive. This is innovation at work. People are scared of the word innovation. Well, here we can do it in regional Australia, and we've seen that with that rocket launch just yesterday in Gundawindi. And I can, I can say that uh, I know Karen Andrews, who looks after the science portfolio, is absolutely committed to making sure that we have more investment uh, in, in, in our uh, space technologies. And indeed, the, uh, the federal government has actually set up uh, a national space agency of sorts. And uh, we're absolutely committed to driving that forward in the future. There are going to be many, many jobs uh, in, in space and in technologies going forward into the future and we want more people to be involved, more young people to be involved and that's why we're committing uh, so much funding to STEM and to particularly to women getting involved in, uh, in STEM subjects at school, uh, young, young girls to, uh, to drive that uh, initiative forward uh, and I look forward to seeing what uh, results from that in the years to come. This is going to be an industry uh, which is only in its uh, infancy at the moment but is going to create uh, a lot of wealth, a lot of prosperity, a lot of jobs and particularly as John McVeigh says for regional Australia in the years to come.